Hi, this is Dr. Claire, and this is our lecture on energy dynamics of ecosystems. So first, we're going to have just a word about energy. So energy, as you hopefully know from physics, um, can neither be created nor destroyed. Um, so it, uh, it, but it can be converted between different forms. Um, so you can have energy that is in a number, a number of different forms. It can be, it can exist as light, as heat, as movement. Um, it can exist in the bonds between um, atoms in, within a compound. All of these things are forms of energy, and you can convert back and forth between those different forms of energy. Now on this planet we are not a closed system. That means that we have energy that's coming in from the outside and we're releasing energy back to the outside. So the energy is coming in primarily uh, as solar energy from our sun in the form of light and heat. Um, and then we uh, also release a lot, uh, some light and a lot of heat back to the to outer space. So we have a roughly equal energy budget of, of incoming energy and outgoing energy. Um, and that the solar energy that's coming in is the source of all the energy that we need to power our, um, our living beings. So we use energy to be alive and do things, and um, that energy is ultimately coming from the sun. So if we take a look at what's happening, um, we have the energy is coming in from the sun. It's being trapped by what we call primary producers. Those are our autotrophs. Those are the, those are the organisms that can take that sunlight energy and use it to make chemical energy in the form of carbon-based compounds, okay? So, um, so that's where the energy for living organisms primarily, with a few exceptions, comes from. It's from that solar energy that's trapped by autotrophs as chemical energy. And then all of your consumers um, eat those producers. So you have primary consumers. Primary consumers are herbivores. They eat producers. They eat plants, generally. Um, and um, so they get their energy from the energy that was harvested by the producers. Then you have secondary consumers or uh, carnivores, primary carnivores, those eat uh, herbivores. And then you can have um, secondary carniv carnivores, which you can also call tertiary um, consumers. Um, those eat uh, other carnivores. And then finally you have detritivores, those eat de dead and deca decaying material. So all of the energy that all of these different organisms um, are using is ultimately coming from the sun. So this, this uh, uh, passing of energy from one uh, level to another, uh, we refer to as the food chain, right? Uh, you can also talk about um, the different trophic levels that organisms are in. So a producer is one trophic level, or is, a, is the first trophic level, then you have your primary consumer as the second trophic level, uh, secondary consumer as the third trophic level, tertiary consumer as your fourth trophic level. So you've got these different trophic levels within the food chain, and each organism has a spot in that food chain. Um, in reality, these are more often more complex they're more like food webs but we can simplify it down to a food chain in this in this instance all right so if you're looking at energy transfer between these different trophic levels if you're looking at energy transfer up the food chain what you see is that it's really not very efficient so primary producers uh, are, are actually only able to utilize about 1% of the solar energy that actually strikes them. So most of the energy that hits a plant is lost. Only a little bit of that energy is actually turned into chemical compounds that the plant can then use. Um, and then when that plant is eaten by an herbivore, only about 10% of the energy in the part of the plant that gets eaten is actually transferred to the herbivore. Then when an herbivore is eaten by a carnivore, only about 10% of the energy in the herbivore is actually passed to the carnivore, and then only about 10% of the, of the energy in the primary carnivore is actually passed to the secondary carnivore. So there's a loss of energy in each increasing um, trophic level. Um, and it's a big loss. 90% of the energy is lost between each trophic level. So where is all that energy going? Going. Well, a lot of it is, um, is contained in chemical compounds that we don't digest. So if you're a grasshopper and you eat a plant, you're going to poop out a lot of potential energy in compounds that you weren't able to digest. So about 50% of the chemical energy within a plant just gets pooped out by the grasshopper. Um, about a third of that, that uh, energy that's eaten by the plant gets used for cellular respiration. So it gets used by the grasshopper to do things like move around, hop, do things like that, right? And only in the case of grasshoppers, grasshoppers are actually more efficient than average because most um, organisms uh, only pass on about 10% or only utilize about 10% of the energy in, in the food they eat. Grasshoppers actually use 17%. Only 17% is actually used to grow the grasshopper. So only 17% of the energy in the plant makes more grasshopper. Okay. Um, and so that's where the energy gets lost too. 
So as you go up in the food chain, there is less and less and less energy that's available for organisms higher in the food chain. So you have to have a high amount of primary productivity um, uh, in the, in the uh, producers at the very bottom of the food chain in order to support a tertiary predator at the top of the food chain. It takes a lot more energy to support that tertiary predator than it does to support an herbivore. Um, this is one reason why um, you hear people say that if we want to feed everybody in the world that uh, we as humans should eat lower on the food chain. That means that it would take less energy for us to produce our food and so we'd be able to feed more people at once. So um, by eating vegetarian you actually um, are eating way lower on the food chain. Something to think about. All right, so it's that primary productivity that's really, really important. Um, and so you can measure uh, what you call the gross primary productivity of a particular ecosystem. Gross primary productivity is just the raw rate at which um, uh, producers within that ecosystem, autotrophs, are photosynthesizing and making sugars, okay? Um, but then you also have to consider the net primary productivity, and the net primary productivity is the gross primary productivity minus the amount of energy that those producers need to keep themselves alive. So all of their respiration that they do as producers. So that's your net primary productivity. And it's the net primary productivity that's really important for determining um, how many other organisms can be supported in that particular ecosystem. So, so if you look at primary productivity in different, um, different ecosystems, um, some have extremely high product, primary productivity. The, the big ones are algal beds and reefs. They have extremely high productivity. Um, and also tropical rainforests. Forests. So there's lots of photosynthesis happening in those places and lots of carbon that's being trapped and fixed. Okay? Um, and then things like the desert and the open ocean actually have very low primary productivity. Um, there's not a whole lot going on there. Um, but if you look at the world net primary productivity, most of the carbon that gets fixed is either getting fixed in tropical rainforests or it's getting fixed in the ocean. I just told you that primary productivity was really low in the ocean. So why is the ocean so high? Well, there's a lot of ocean. Two thirds of the planet is covered in ocean. So because there's a lot of ocean, it's really responsible for a lot of the primary productivity on the planet. All right, so um, if you're looking at these different trophic levels that are going to be supported by these different organisms, um, a lot of times you might be interested in how um, different trophic levels or effects that influence one trophic level are going to affect other trophic levels. So you can have what are called top-down effects, where you have um, an impact to uh, an organism at the top of the food chain has effects on organisms lower in the food chain, or a bottom-up effect where effects on the bottom of the food chain impact individuals higher in the food chain. So let's take a look at some examples of those. So here's an example of a top-down effect. So in this um, simple food chain, you have algae, that is the producer, that's uh, photosynthesizing. Um, then you have an herbivorous uh, insect that is the primary consumer. Uh, then you have a carnivorous damselfly that eats the herbivorous insect, that's the secondary consumer. And then you have a tertiary consumer, which is a fish that eats the damselfly. And so if you take the fish out of this um, out of this ecosystem, what happens is the damselfly levels go up, the herbivorous insect levels go down, and the algae levels go up. So um, the damselfly levels go up because there's no fish to eat the damselfly. So now they're the top of the food chain. And because there's more damselflies, they eat more of the herbivorous insects, and so that drives their population down. And because there's fewer herbivorous insects, there's not as much to eat the algae, and so that allows the algae population to increase. So that's an example of a top-down effect, okay? Um, Bottom-up effects have to do with the amount of primary uh, production that's happening at the bottom of the food chain. So um, when you have low primary productivity at the bottom of the food chain, you can't really support very many consumers at all, possibly no consumers. So at very low primary productivity, you have no uh, consumers at all no herbivores, no nothing. Um, then when you get to a certain level of primary productivity where you're, you're fixing enough carbon, you can start to support those herbivores. And as your primary productivity goes up, that herbivore population will go up. And then eventually you get enough primary productivity to support enough herbivores to support some carnivores, okay? So this is an example of a bottom up, um, uh, a bottom up trophic cascade. Okay, um, that's our lecture on energy transfer in ecosystems.